All right, let's uh, start by looking at problem one, which is example 12.1 from the text. So we have a binary solution described by the one parameter equation. Uh, and so that is our uh, two suffix Margulies equation. Okay, and I'm going to point that out, all right? So this is uh, x1 uh, minus x1 squared. So this would be equivalent of a um, x1 times one minus x1, which is equivalent to a x1 x2. And I point that out because if you look at um, our screencast and getting analytic expressions for activity coefficients from GE models, uh, this is exactly the expression we looked at. And so for this case, we had then that log gamma 1 was equal to a x2 squared and log gamma 2 is equal to a x1 squared. Okay, so go ahead and look at that screencast if you want to see how we get these expressions from that. Um, and you know they should also be worked out uh, in the text. All right, um, so our a is a constant at 50 degrees C and x1 is equal to 0 0.3. The partial pressure of the two components in the vapor phase are uh, that. Saturation pressure of pure components at 50 degrees C is that. Uh, construct a PXY graph for the system at 50 degrees C. All right, so we're asked to construct a PXY phase diagram. We have a pure, two pure component vapor pressures, and we have a GE model, okay? And so if I'm gonna use modified Braille's law, what I'm gonna need is an analytic expression for gamma. Okay, uh, and before I can have my analytic expression for gamma, I need to parameterize A. All right, so let's do it, right? And if I think about, you know, I'd say I have to um, get A, um, we're given the partial pressure um, of the two components um, at, you know, that point. All right, so we could, we could go a number of ways. Um, one would just be uh, to start with our modified Reynolds law uh, problem, uh, where we're given the partial pressure and composition, and we can solve for A. And then once we have that, we'll map out the rest of our PXY. Okay, so let's take this in steps. Okay, so um, step one. So uh, we need to solve for A. Okay, and so basically here, we're given um, uh, our coexistence um, X and Y um, at a particular point, right? We're given a, a specific coexistence point, which we can use to solve for A, right? Our single unknown, okay? I have just a single unknown A, or single parameter A, so I need to fit that to at least one reference point, which is what we're given here, okay? So you see, you know, explicitly of X. Y, you know, isn't explicit, but they give you partial pressure, that's just Y times P, okay? Um, so let's, let's do this, all right? So we need to solve for A, so we need at least one uh, reference point. Uh, they give that to us. So if I write down my criteria phase coexistence using uh, modified Reynolds law expression, so here's Y1P is equal to gamma 1 um, times X1 times P1 sat, okay? Y2P is equal to gamma 2 X2 P2 sat, okay? And I'm going to rewrite this in the context of this problem as P1, partial pressure of component 1, is equal to gamma 1, X1, uh, P1 sat. P2 is equal to gamma 2, X2, P2 sat. Okay. So far, so good. Okay. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to add the two equations together. Okay. Um, and so... Let me just draw a big line in terms of adding them. So if I add them, okay, on the left hand side I'm going to have P1 plus P2, which is actually P, okay. Um, but I'm writing in terms of little p's because we're given partial pressure, uh, not necessarily the total P. P1 is gamma 1 X1 P1 sat plus gamma 2 X2 P2 sat. Okay. I'm going to plug in um, expressions for my gammas. So P1 plus P2 is equal to uh, gamma 1. Well, this would be exponential of, because remember it's log gamma 1, which is AX2 squared, exponential of A 
x2 squared um, times x1 times p uh, x1 times p1 sat. plus the exponential of a x1 squared times p2 sat. Okay, so option one, right, the first route I could go is I can use this expression Okay. along with, I should also plug in x2 is equal to 1 minus x1. All right, so this would give me a system of two equations um, with you know, two unknowns in theory. Right? And why I say that is you're given um, x1, we're given p1 sat, okay, we know x1, we know uh, p2 sat. Um, I forgot a term, I am doing a, a bad job here. All right, so I forgot this is x2 times p2 sat. Okay, so in the problem statement, we're given little, we're given P1, P2, we're given our partial pressures. We know X1 and P1 sat, we know X1 and P2 sat, okay. In theory, I don't know X2 uh, and I don't know A, but I know X2 is 1 minus X1, okay. And so you could think of this then as a single equation with a single unknown, so you could directly solve uh, for A, okay. Cool. The other way you could go about this, so that's option one. Okay, so we can call that, you know, say option one, you're just fitting to data point. Okay, option two, okay, and we'll call it option two, would be this whole idea of data reduction. Okay, and so what I mean by that is so I write down my modified Reynolds law expression. So yip is equal to gamma i um, xi pi sat. Okay, or in the context of this problem, yip is just equal to pi. So if I solve for gamma i, gamma i is equal to pi divided by xi pi sat. Okay, so we can solve for gamma one. Gamma one would be p one over x one p one sat. Okay, we can solve for gamma two. Gamma two would be p two over one minus x one, right, or x two uh, p two sat. Okay. And then once I have the two of those, okay, I know that GE, okay, um, in theory you could write it as GE over RT, okay, would be equal to X1 G bar uh, G bar one excess plus X2 G bar two E. Okay, I can divide through by RT to get it in its dimensionless form, okay. Or equivalently, GE over RT then would be X1 log gamma 1 plus X2 log gamma 2. Okay, where I just solved for right gamma 1 and gamma 2, right? I can get a number from the provided information. Okay, GE over RT, right? That's going to be equal to my um, A X1 X2, right? Cool. So I have numerical values for gamma 1 and gamma 2. I know the value of x1 and x2. I know the value of x1 and x2. So all that's left is to solve for a. All right. So a would be equal to x1 log gamma 1 plus x2 log gamma 2. Um, that divided by x1, x2. Okay. So your choice. Essentially, you're using the same data to fit to that same property. Okay, cool. Okay, and in general, when it comes to data reduction, it's you know, essentially the same idea, right? If you were to have multiple reference data points, um, you're just going to try and you know minimize the deviation between you know GE of your model and GE given by your reference data using this data reduction technique, um, or you know, say with respect to, you know, your bubble point or, or whatever point uh, you want to use to fit. Okay, cool. So we can solve for A. Okay, so we have that. And then in next, then it wants you to map out a PXY phase diagram.
Okay, cool. Well, so the key is, right, once I have A, okay, so in terms of mapping out uh, PXY, okay, so we know P1 sat and we know P2 sat, okay, at 50 degrees C, so those are known. So if I want to map out a PXY uh, phase diagram, well, if I'm thinking in terms of Excel, okay, it's in this case, since my GE model is parameterized, it's not all that different than um, if I were to use Reynolds law. Okay, if I'm thinking in terms of an Excel sheet, okay, what I do is I would set up a column of X1 values to go from zero to one. Okay, so those are gonna be all of the X values at which I wanna compute Y, right? If I'm looking across my um, PXY phase diagram. Cool, you know, in the pure component limits, you know, X10 and Y10, I know, you know, Y10 and Y11, and P is just equal to PSAP, but, you know, in general, we, we could drag that across. All right, and so then if I know X1, if I wanna make an X2 column for simplicity, I can do that, right? Or X2, right, that's just one minus X1. Next column might be I calculate gamma one, okay? Gamma one, would just be what? Exponential of a x2 squared, where I know a2. Okay, so I can calculate gamma one for each of those x's. Then I can get gamma two. Gamma two would be exponential of a x1 squared. Okay, where I know a. Okay, bam. And then, you know, from there, okay, let's take an aside. Uh, what I ultimately want to get is p and y. Well, how am I gonna get P and Y? So how we would get P before is from a bubble P calculation. So, so get P from bubble P, all right? And so remember the idea, bubble, bubble, <laughs> bubble P. And so the idea of a bubble P calculation is at the bubble point for my mixture, the liquid composition at saturation is just equal to the composition of my mixture. Okay, and so bubble P calculation would be Y1P is equal to, now we have gamma one X1 uh, P1 sat, Y2P is equal to gamma two X2 P2 sat. Now bubble P calculation, add these two expressions together, uh, P I can factor out Y1 plus Y2 is one. So I get P is equal to gamma one x1 p1 sat plus gamma two x2 p2 sat okay so i know x1 and x2 i know gamma one and gamma two right from those rows and i know p1 sat and p2 sat okay so i would go and i would first then calculate p how i get p okay is from a bubble p calculation Then the last thing to calculate is Y1, okay? How do I get Y1? Well, after bubble P calculation, okay, Y1P is equal to gamma one X1 P1 sat. So solving for Y, Y1 would be gamma one X1 P1 sat over P, okay? So I solve for Y, Y1, and if you want Y2, Y2 is just one minus Y1. Then if you wanted a PXY phase diagram, what do I do? I plot pressure P versus X1, and I plot pressure P versus Y1 in the same graph, PXY. Okay, so the key here was we had to be given one reference data point, one reference data point so that we could parameterize our excess Gibbs free energy model, find parameter A, um, and then once our excess Gibbs free energy model is parameterized, we could go and extrapolate and map out our entire um, PXY uh, phase diagram. Cool. That's all there is to it.